Well, could this happen here on November 1st? The Department of Homeland Security says yes, it can. It's spending 80 million bucks to batten cities down. You won't believe why, though. November 1st could be a very, very, uh, well, iffy kind of a day. And I'm not just talking about what many in the uh, Catholic Church view as All Saints Day. This could be all hell breaks loose day. The Department of Homeland Security spending 80 million on a raft of armed guards to protect the IRS and other government buildings in New York. Not from terrorist threats, mind you, but from American citizens. Because on November 1st, uh, the food stamp program is set to start decreasing the amount that is allocated to food stamp recipients. Not all, but a good many. And they're worried that violence will ensue. Tea Party.net chief strategist Niger Ennis says, like Greece, violence is a serious concern when entitlements are threatened. And Niger, I guess they're preparing for the worst, should they be? Well, this is, this is really frightening. I mean, we are on a slow march to becoming Greece. You know, what this says more than anything is that when you have fit, nearly 50 million Americans on food stamps that are forced to be on food stamps because of a miserable economy uh, that big government is strangling, uh, then you have a situation where it's obvious what government can give to you, government can take away. Hmm. And we have a crisis within our country right now when you have the 50 million people, nearly the entire West Coast, three uh, states on the West Coast of the United States, on food stamps. That, that is, that's the real outrage, and yeah, that's the say, real crisis. Well, to say nothing of about 100 million Americans who get some sort of food assistance. Now, I'm not begrudging the fact that genuinely, there are some who genuinely need that help, and, and we should help them. But it's gotten so out of control now that if, you, if, 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 if it keeps going at this pace, of course, everyone will be on it. And we have to get out of this. I mean, we are on a, a slow march march to being Western Europe, uh, a socialized Western Europe, big government state where people uh, have not only uh, not only on entitlements, but have an entitlement mentality. And I'm not blaming the people that want these entitlements or in many cases might even be addicted to, to these entitlements. I'm saying they are victims and need to be liberated. Top story headline, Chase Bank limits cash withdrawals, bans international wire transfers. Now, this is a story we'll go into in great lengths later this broadcast with Paul Joseph Watson, and we'll also show you what happened when Anthony Gucci already called Chase Bank earlier today. But this uh, article stemmed from a document we received from a Chase Bank customer outline, outline uh, just what we told you, that they're saying that the Chase Bank, that they're going to limit your cash withdrawals. And like I said, we'll talk more about this in depth at the end of the broadcast. But for right now, let's look at this crisis. USDA orders states to withhold electronic food stamps. Now, we've seen the riots and the storming of Walmarts and so forth go on in recent days. And that's just a brief uh, preview of things that could come if the food stamp situation gets any worse. The USDA sent letters to state agency directors on October 11th, directing them to delay funding to state EBT vendors until further notice. In other words, up to 47 million Americans who rely on food stamps to feed their families may face the prospect of going without food next month. Considering the fact that a two-hour glitch in the EBT system led to many riots and looting last weekend, imagine the reaction of millions of Americans living near the poverty line when they learn that they might not be credited next month. It can impact us and it's going to cause problems because then you you're going to come to find out you're going to have people starting to steal and do what they have to do to survive. But is sending the nation into panic mode part of the globalist plan? Former Navy SEAL Ben Smith seems to think so. They want us to do something. They either want to diminish our voice or our significance or draw contact and they can crush us. I mean, you've got Sheila Jackson Lee who is calling for martial law to end the shutdown. This strategy of creating pressure from above and below would mean that the government could create the crisis of a food shortage and then swoop in to restore order, thereby expanding government power at the expense of individual rights.